Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. So we have x to the power of 8 minus 121 is equal to 0. Now, what most people would think to do to solve this equation is add 121 on both sides. So then I would get x to the power of 8 equals 121. And then, since x is to the power of 8, take the eighth root on both sides to get an answer of the eighth root of 121. And this method is actually wrong because there are actually many more solutions than just two to this equation. There's many more. So we want to find all of these solutions to this equation. So how are we going to do that? Well, our first step is to rewrite x to the power of 8 as x to the power of 4 times 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 4 times 2 is equal to x to the power of 4 to the power of 2. Now I have this minus 121 which we can rewrite as 11 to the power of 2. And the reason we're going to do that is so now we can use an important algebraic property that states that if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x to the power of 4, and b is 11. So I get x to the power of 4 plus 11 times x to the power of 4 minus 11, which is equal to 0. Now, from here, I get two equations. I get x to the power of 4 plus 11 is equal to 0, and x to the power of 4 minus 11 is equal to 0. And we are still not done yet, because to solve this equation, people are going to think, oh, add 11 on both sides and take the fourth root. But we're going to do the same thing we did with our original equation. I'm going to rewrite x to the power of 4 as x to the power of 2 times 2. And now I can rewrite that as x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. And 11, I'm going to write as the square root of 11 squared. So now I can use this property again. So I get x squared plus the square root of 11 times x squared minus the square root of 11 is equal to 0. And again, I get two equations. I get x squared plus the square root of 11 is equal to 0, and x squared minus the square root of 11 is equal to 0. Now, what I can do is for x squared minus the square root of 11 equals 0, I'm going to add the square root of 11 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x squared is equal to square root of 11. And now if I take the square root on both sides, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of the square root of 11 is the fourth root of 11. This is positive or negative. Now for x squared plus the square root of 11 is equal to 0, I'm going to subtract the square root of 11 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to negative square root of 11. So now I get the square root of x squared is equal to the square root of negative square root of 11. So the square root of x squared is x. And the square root of the negative square root of 11, I can write this as negative square root of square root of 11.
So now this is the same. So now if I take the square root on both sides, I get the square root of x squared is equal to negative square root of 11. Or sorry, the square root of negative square root of 11, which I can rewrite as x is equal to the square root of negative 11 to the power of 1 half, which is equal to negative 11 to the power of 1 half to the power of 1 half. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. So I get x is equal to negative 11 to the power of 1 fourth. Now going back here, I have x to the power of 4 plus 11 equals 0. So I can subtract 11 on both sides. And I get x to the power of 4 equals negative 11. Now I can take the fourth root on both sides. So I get x is equal to the fourth root of negative 11. And this is positive or negative. All right, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of 10 plus 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 2 to the power of x. So I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, I'm going to first start by rewriting my equation. So my equation is 2 to the power of 10 plus 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 2 to the power of x. Now, to solve this, what I'm going to do is first factor out 2 to the power of 10 to my left-hand side. So if I factor out 2 to the power of 10, I get 2 to the power of 10 times, well, 2 to the power of 10 divided by 2 to the power of 10 is 1, so I get 2 to the power of 10 times 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 to the power of x. Now from here, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2, so I get 2 to the power of 10 times 2 is equal to 2 to the power of x. And a simpler way of doing this is instead of just factoring this out, well, we have two 2 to the power of 10s here. And if anything added by itself is the same thing as that number times 2. So we could have just said 2 to the power of 10 times 2 at the beginning instead of factoring it out. So now from here, what I want to do is I can actually do this, solve this from here in two methods. So for method 1, I have 2 to the power of 10 times 2 is equal to 2 to the power of x. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 2 as 2 to the power of 1. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So in this case, 2 to the power of 10 times 2 to the power of 1 is equal to 2 to the power of 10 plus 1 which is equal to 2 to the power of 11. So I get 2 to the power of 11 is equal to 2 to the power of x. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x is equal to 11. Now, method 2 of solving the problem from this step right here so I have 2 to the power of 10 times 2 is equal to 2 to the power of x. Now, instead of multiplying 2, I'm going to divide 2 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get 2 to the power of 10 is equal to 2 to the power of x over 2. Now, 2 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 1. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So 2 to the power of x over 2 to the power of 1, that's going to equal 2 to the power of x minus 1. And now, again, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, 10 is equal to x minus 1, or I could write this as x minus 1 is equal to 10. 
And now if I add one on both sides, these two cancel out and I get X is equal to 10 plus one, which is 11. So as you can see, these are the two methods and method one is actually much simpler. It only took a couple of steps compared to method two. And now the final step that we have to do, and we always have to do this in every equation is to check our answer. So our equation was two to the power of 10 plus two to the power of 10 is equal to two to the power of X. We got X equals 11. So I get two to the power of 10 plus two to the power of 10 is equal to two to the power of 11. Two to the power of 10 plus two to the power of 10 is the same thing as two times two to the power of 10. And two, two to the power of one times two to the power of 10 is the same thing as two to the power of one plus 10, which is equal to two to the power of 11.